All right, guys, let's tackle this thing once and for all. I've been saying for like months that my 3D printer has been like broken and then fixed and then broken and da -da 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 -da. Turns out it's just always been broken. Like after a certain point, I broke it and just haven't fixed it ever. It just had certain points where it would decide to work for like a minute even though it was still broken. I don't know, it's been a weird process. Now I could just buy a new one because prices on 3D printers have absolutely plummeted lately. But that seems like kind of a waste considering I've already spent 1200 bucks on this. Which looking back, was kind of stupid. Really should not have spent over a thousand dollars at 1 a.m. on Black Friday. Excuse me while I go regret my life decision. Anyway, I've got a couple options of what I can actually do, but in this video, we are going to finally take care of this for real, actually. So let's get started. Humans. My name's Davis, also known as Fluffball, and you're watching Fluffball the Wizard. Now, you may have noticed, I'm in the car. You might be thinking to yourself, well Davis, how can you fix a 3D printer in a car? And that's a very valid question, because the answer is you can't. At least not safely, or probably very effectively. The secret is that I actually already fixed it. It's actually been fixed for a few weeks now. But as usual with most projects, actually doing the thing takes less time than documenting the process and making a video on it. I just don't have time to do like a talk to camera thing at home, so I'm doing it in the car on my way to school. So ultimately, it turns out I was right and there was something wrong with the hot end. I'm like 97% sure it was my fault. And like, I couldn't clean out the gunk that was in there, so like I had to just replace it somehow. But in my research on how to do that, I stumbled across a different hot end entirely called the E3D Hermes, and it looks like a bit of an upgrade from the Aerostrader. Now, I was under the impression that Lulzbot made the Aerostrader because that comes stock with the Mini, but it turns out E3D actually makes that too, and Lulzbot just sources from them. Also, in my research, I discovered a thing that E3D makes as well that people call 3D printing socks, and these are supposed to help your brains dramatically. It's basically just a silicone covering that you put over your nozzle and Block, and it protects the nozzle from getting dirty. It makes sure that filament doesn't get stuck on the nozzle because the silicone is like anti-stick for plastic. And it keeps the heat where it's supposed to be. It keeps the hot things hot and the cold things cold. It just wants to be like a huge help for heat creep, which is, I think, also part of the problem with weather in the first place. So I'm definitely getting some of those. But ultimately, for the hot end itself, I think I just wanted to get a replacement for my cooking block. But it turns out both lot would actually outstock with those when I checked. And like, they just didn't have them in the But I, I checked over the course of the several weeks. And they were never good. So I checked the problems. The whole process was such a good process. And I don't know that way. But it's okay. In fact, you know what? You know what? I think this would be best expressed in the form of song. In fact, I, uh, I, I feel a little, little blues coming on. You guys feel that? At this rate, I'm gonna need to sing. I don't think I've ever actually sung on this channel before. Whoa, whoa, how did that get there? Oh my goodness. Don't look at that. Definitely do not go looking in the description for a link to that video or anything. Where'd the blues go? Let's get that back in here. Gosh. Oh yeah, there we go. I am just gonna sing my heart out with my woes of 3D printing. So, uh, please enjoy. Let me tell you about my 3D printing woes. Oh, everything's broken, but it's my own fault and so it goes. Got some PLA carbonized in the nozzle And I can't get it out I tried poking, prodding, digging, scraping, nothing worked You get what I'm talking about I've got a couple of options now What to do? Oh Keep doing what I'm doing like a fool Oh, number two is get a replacement part Straight from Bull's bot Ooh, that's expensive But for not much more money I could upgrade which could be hot but eh, I'd kinda like to get this done with and out of the way Soon as possible But Lulz Bot is out of stock of the part I need which ruins my day Oh no, I feel like this 
this is going kind of slow A lot has happened that I need to tell you Yes, indeed So without further ado Let me get you up to speed Well, Lowell's bought it out of stock Other stock, hot and hot dang, awful thing What do I do? Can't buy from you What do we got? Welcome stock Aerostruder, thanks computer Who makes these? E3D? Interesting, that's the same as Hermes well, technically it's Hamera now, but that's another story. Point is, I was thinking about an upgrade, possibly someday. Change my mind, nickel and dime, plus it's a lot of effort and time. Let me see what we need. E3D, just tell me please. Titan Arrow Hunted with a V6 nozzle. 0.5 millimeter, not 0.4 diameter. 3 millimeter filament, not 1.75. Gotta get the 24 volt, not the 12 volt. Standard, not mirror. Wait, mirror, not standard. And there goes a couple of bucks in a couple of days, I'm out of luck. I don't mind the wait. Close date, just kinda sucks. Really should have checked. Would have taken one sec, but I'm stupid. I do it, we're through it, and I knew it. Lost the bet. Plot twist, Lowe's bought his back in stock, so I'll get that. Just keep the silicone socks Now I don't have to truck myself with assembly Plus I get a warranty That's better if you're asking me I think we've just about got this thing done Frickin' finally I broke it into pieces Then put it back together in one So now let's turn it on and try something We'll see how it goes But thank you all for listening, this has been my 3D printing words. Whew. That was good to get off my chest. Now before you blast me in the comments about like, complains that he has no time to record at home, proceeds to record an entire music video, let me just say, you have a point, but I really wanted that to be good quality and the talking stuff can be done in the car. But yeah, it freaking works. We have a 3D printer again. I think that about wraps it up for this video, but if you stick around to the end, I've got some news that you're probably gonna wanna hear. So don't click away just yet. I am so happy about this. I can now properly print not only rigid PLA and stuff, but also Ninja Flex and Semi Flex. Whoa, what's what's that part? Could that possibly be for the, the, the instrument that I'm designing? Yeah, that's coming back. In fact, as I mentioned before, I actually have a lot of the footage for the next update on that. I just need to edit all of it. So hopefully an update will come out on that soon. I am so excited. If you, if you haven't seen what I'm doing with this, please check out the first videos that I made on it. I am designing my own MIDI controller from scratch. And at its core, it's essentially a keyboard with breath control, but it's so much more than that. Like I've never seen this done to the degree that I'm doing it. I've come so far since I first had the idea for it, and I'm so excited to see where it goes in the future. I also got a few smaller projects that were on hold printed, starting with the updated version of the whole for my multi-tool freaking finally. The one that I've been using that didn't quite fit was the last print that I got off my printer before it died. So the new version of it with updated measurements is the first print that I got off of it once it was revived. And I have been absolutely loving it. Oh my goodness, it's so much better than the old one. The second small project that I did was a 3D coordinate system for my physics teacher. One of her earlier lectures in the semester was teaching us the basics of the coordinate system. Any of y'all who know what I'm talking about probably know the uh, physics gang sign, otherwise known as the right hand rule. But she was demonstrating this with like pencils and trying to hold them in place and stuff. And she was like, ah, oh, this is such a hassle. Someone 3D print me one of these. I'll give you an A for the semester. I'm like, hmm, is that so? I didn't actually get an A for the semester, but I did get 10 points of extra credit, so that's nice. Also, some of you may remember the modular cable storage system. I posted the first video to that a while back and mentioned that there would be more to it, but I couldn't get around to it because my 3D printer broke. So since I've got it fixed, I have been printing like a madman because this thing takes so much plastic. Like since the 3D printer has been up and running, it has probably printed a total of multiple days straight just for that project.
project. So I'm excited to show you the next steps for that. Uh, virtual reality. Holy crap, this channel is all over the map. So all my accessories for the Oculus Quest finally came in the mail. So hopefully I can do my part three review for that and I can give you guys some tips on what accessories to get for it. Now, we also have the longboard project. This has probably got the most attention since my Jazza blow up. And to be honest, it's probably my favorite project right now too, besides the instrument. However, it's also by far my most expensive project. Like, I've already spent over a thousand dollars on this project, and I'm probably looking at about half a thousand more. So, unfortunately, I have had to put that project aside for a little bit. Like, this really sucks because, like, skateboarding is currently how I get around campus, or longboarding, or whatever the heck my abomination of a board is. And the electric longboard that I'm designing, I'm making primarily for school. So like, it's also my most time sensitive project. Just to clarify that, I mean I'm making it primarily for school use, not for a school project. So it's time sensitive because I'm not gonna be in school forever, not because it has a due date. So to sum up, this is my favorite project, most time sensitive project, most expensive project, and probably the project that I know least about. None of of those things play nice together. Like, no combination of those things together is good. However, there is a way that we can do this. The bit of news that I mentioned earlier that would be at the end of the video is I have a Patreon now. So if you want to support me in this channel, you can give me money. Now, I still do have under a thousand subscribers at the moment of recording, so I'm really not expecting a lot. And also I still can't monetize from YouTube yet. But ultimately, at its core, this is a maker channel and almost every maker needs financial support. Like I'm still working part-time fast food while going to college. So that does not leave me a lot of budget for projects like this. So the way I'm gonna do it is everything that I receive from Patreon, I'm gonna keep track of as like a YouTube piggy bank kind of thing and only use that for projects on the channel. So that means that at least for the time being, every dollar that you give me through Patreon will come directly back at you in the form of quality content and new projects and project updates. Like I said, I'm not expecting much at first and like the credits are probably gonna be really awkward at first because it'll be like, yes, thank you to all two of my patrons. But hey, that just means you can get some extra publicity if you jump on the, the, the fluffball support bandwagon early. But yeah, I will make a better video introducing that in the future, but I figured if it's ready to launch, I may as well. So keep your eyes peeled on more details about that. Oh, I'm so excited for everything in the future of this channel. Love you guys so much. If you like my videos, there's a button for that. If you like most of my content or are interested in the future as I am, then feel free to subscribe to Fluffball the Wizard. And until next time, make a thing, sing a song, hug a person. Catch y'all later.